Welcome back everyone. My name is Michael LeBlanc, Senior Portfolio Manager and Director at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. Today I want to talk to you about diversification in a portfolio, specifically a balanced portfolio. Most of the time you'll find that's a 60-40 split between equities and fixed income. Before we get started, as always, you should consider this uh, as information. Don't uh, consider it as advice. Everyone's situation is, is completely different and unique and you should always seek the advice of a professional or do your own due diligence before proceeding with an investment. Uh, why I want to cover this, and it might sound like a boring and, and, and topic that uh, you, you might be very familiar with, but there's two aspects of uh, the balanced portfolios that I think are often overlooked. One, exactly why we've created that type of portfolio. And the most popular one, as I said, 60% equities, 40% fixed income. <clears throat> and also why that doesn't always work and why you should consider uh, different strategies within a portfolio, even if you consider yourself that risk level. So let's break it down as to why we use 60-40 split in portfolios or why the industry uses it so often inside portfolios. And it goes all the way back to 1952 with a mathematician called Markowitz. Uh, Markowitz created what we call modern portfolio theory. He won a Nobel Prize for it in 1990. And he, he, he took a study of risk versus reward. And he plotted that on a graph, very simple to start with, you know, zero risk, low reward, straight line up to higher risk, higher reward. So that's what he, that was the starting of that basis. Now, before I dive deeper into uh, his theory, uh, let's start by defining what risk is. Risk in our everyday life is very easy to, to define. Are we, is this dangerous or is it not dangerous? <clears throat> But when we talk about investments, um, we, we define risk based on volatility. And volatility is actually the range or the expected range uh, of the up and down movements. And it's based on an average. So it doesn't mean it's always going to be in that range that we assign the value of vol volatility. It just means the average historic range of volatility on that particular, particular type of investment, this is how it's performed. So we assign risk. Uh, and it's a number, one, two, three, four, all the way up. Uh, we assign risk uh, along that that, uh, that that bar of the graph. <clears throat> so what Mark, Markowitz looked like looked at individual portfolios, and he he studied two asset classes in particular, equities and fixed income, or sometimes called bonds. And he started plotting those returns with different mixes: 90, 10, 80, 20, 70, 30, 60, 40, 50, 50, and so on. And that's where we get today. Often you will find that you are rated uh, on a risk level, balance, growth, conservative, aggressive. Uh, many of you have probably gone into a bank and filled in a, a multiple choice questionnaire and it spits out and says you're balanced and they recommend 50-50 or 60-40 mixes are, are the common uh, recommendations in those ranges. And how they get to that is because Markowitz started plotting uh, the average returns in these portfolios, and they found he wasn't getting a straight line. Uh, in fact, he was getting this curved front, and it's called the efficient frontier, where the different mixes performed with the, the curve bulging upwards on the return side of things. So at 60-40, you were getting a higher return for the amount of risk than you would on that linear line. And the reason for this had to do with another component in his formula, which is correlation. Correlation is simply a, a number or percentage between minus one and positive one uh, as to how two different asset classes or two different investments react to uh, at different times under the same conditions. So for example, two, uh, two equities in the same industry would be very close to a one correlation, meaning almost 100% of the time, they would both go up at the same time or go down at the same time. Uh, and conversely, two different uh, asset classes uh, might be negative one correlation or they act completely opposite of each other under the same conditions. And this is the real big premise behind modern portfolio theory, is that bonds or fixed income go up when equities are going down and vice versa. So it, it provides for that diversification and why you get that bulge along the efficient frontier is when one is going down, the other one is supporting the, the overall portfolio by increasing. So it, it gives you that extra value, that extra alpha in your portfolio 
meaning you get a higher return for the amount of risk you're taking. Now this proved true, and as I said, back in 1990, uh, Marcus won a Nobel Prize for his work. It proved true for a very long time in the markets, uh, is that correlation, be, that op negative correlation between equities and fixed income. And even today, we see a large, large number of mutual funds, ETFs, or portfolio managers using a passive approach or a buy and hold strategy with a 60-40 or 50-50 mix uh, to provide that, uh, that, that risk profile for investors. The problem with that is that correlation aspect of the formula. Now the formula is very complicated, it has a lot more math in it than just those three numbers, but what we're focusing on today here is that correlation. In fact, correlation no longer holds true at times when the market's under extreme stress. And the market since the mid to late 80s has actually increased correlation between different asset classes uh, more and more often when we go into these correct corrective markets. 2008 was an extreme example. 2011 in the European financial crisis, we saw it again. Uh, and most recently we saw it in, in the March numbers with the COVID um, crisis and, and correction in the market, where it, when you plot the different asset classes, especially fixed income against equities, they positively correlate, meaning they all go down at the same time, which is why you see sometimes balanced funds actually perform very negatively, almost as bad and sometimes worse than you see in uh, equity portfolios uh, during a time of uh, market stress. And the reason behind that, there's a lot of reasons behind that. We have efficiency of market. We have, uh, you know, technology brings us information flow a lot quicker. Uh, you know, back in 52, when this was created, the central banks uh, controlled interest and inflation completely differently than we do today. Uh, the, the, the central banks are much more reactive, much more in tune with the equity markets than they were back then. So with all these factors coming together, what we find is that secure part of the, the, the portfolio that's supposed to be secure actually can completely uh, correlate with your equity side and go down at the same time. This is why it's not really a great practice to stick to that 60-40 at all times in the portfolio because they're not going to have that opposite correlation that you want. You should still apply a diversified portfolio. You should still use fixed income. Uh, but in a, in a much more active way, picking the correct ones, picking the correct uh, uh, lengths of time. So, you, you know, cash, obviously, or what we call anything that matures under one year, cash equivalents, uh, are going to react very differently than a 10-year, say, bond or a five-year GIC, uh, where your rates are locked in a longer period of time and interest rates can move along the way. So when you take that, that new look at correlation, it really throws off the uh, modern portfolio theory and the efficient frontier. In fact, Mark Woods himself has come out and said he doesn't believe it works anymore uh, given modern times. So I really, really want to, to make people understand uh, the importance of managing your risk side, managing those correlations, being very active in the portfolio, especially during times of stress in the markets, uh, and, and here at the LeBlanc Group, that's always been our focus. We've always focused on risk first, not returns. And we don't use average risk. And again, as I mentioned, uh, volatility is average risk, not absolute risk. So we always try to work on absolute risk inside a portfolio uh, to better your returns, decrease your risk over time, and uh, give you a higher uh, benefit in the long run. I'm gonna show you here uh, another chart that you often see alongside with the buy and hold strategy. It's the how what your return is affected over time if you're out of the market. And what we always see is if you're out of the market, the 10 best days or the 10 best weeks over whatever period of time, uh, how much lower your rate of return ends up being at the end. But I'm also gonna show you here is the effect of being out of the market the 10 worst days or the 10 worst weeks over that same period of time and how positively that affects your portfolio because it's a lot easier to grow a portfolio when it's not going down as far as the markets go and and be able to recover from there so i'm going to leave you on that note 
As always, you can get more information on our website, leblancgroup.ca. Uh, the link will be down below. Feel free to reach out to us if you want us to review your portfolio. Subscribe to the channel if you want more information like this along the way. But as always, be well, stay safe, and we'll talk soon.